When we look at typical examples of these tests, in this case all done on Bit Robot 105, let me start these videos here, um, we can see that we can get quite different behavior on the same material and the different loading conditions. On top we can see here, especially on this three-point bending specimen, we get a significant formation and proliferation of shear bands like it is the case here, and then the samples form a very large plastic zone size and fail rather catastrophically, as we can see from these two examples. On the other end, same sample, same loading conditions. On the sample down here, not really anything happens of this. No significant formation of proliferation of shear bands, and the sample fails at much smaller load, a completely different failure characteristic, at a significantly smaller fracture toughness as well, which is kind of close to what one expect would expect compared to these numbers that are unrealistically high. So we have different fracture toughnesses, a wide range, and also completely different failure characteristics. These differences are not all only uh, unique to this video 105. Exactly the same thing happened to our burrito glass, to our ductile glass. We get very large variations in our numbers, which we can see from the standard deviations. We also measured very high mean values, 50 all the way to 90 MPa root meter in bending. But what's interesting about this when we go to tension, we see even higher numbers and larger standard deviations. So there is obviously a clear trend to higher numbers in uh, tension compared to bending, which is probably not a good thing to have. But what we can say from these tests is that at least our numbers do not have to be associated with the bending ductility we see from strength tests. What's also interesting, no matter we measure lower fracture toughnesses or higher fracture toughnesses, despite all the plastic zone that we see ahead of the corrective and the shear band formation, we basically get almost ideally linear elastic load displacement curves. In order to understand what's really going on now, we have done some uh, fractography after testing. We were looking at fracture surfaces. We started with the sample that failed at a relatively low fracture toughness. We can nicely see our notch, our pre-crack, our sample propagated in a nice mode, one failure characteristic. Uh, we see some shear lips close to the surface of the sample as expected, but other than that, there was not really anything going on, and we think that these numbers that we got, this low fraction toughness of 37, which is actually not that bad for such high strength material, is close to the plain strain fraction toughness of this material. When we compare this now to a sample, same material, same loading condition that show the much higher fraction toughness, we can say essentially the same. We get a nice notch pre-crack, then break extension in mode one plane. We also see these shear lips here, but additionally have in the center of the sample such a shear offset lip that is quite pronounced and that causes crack deflection out of the mode one plane before the crack dives back into the mode one plane, which obviously requires a lot of energy and pushes these numbers up all the way to 70 and set more than 70 MPa root meter, which for these geometries that we tested is not really a plane strain fracture toughness anymore. When we look at another sample where these shear lips were even more pronounced, then we can see that they can cause quite rough fracture surfaces. We get deviations, crack path deviations, deflection in all different directions. This is far from a mode one fracture toughness. This is certainly not valid. Requires a lot of uh, energy and pumps the numbers up to 170 MPa root meter for such high strength material that is quite unrealistic. The shear lips are also not unique to the uh, to the semi brittle glass, we found the same for the brittle glass uh, that showed such shear lips quite over the entire thickness of the sample, which obviously caused a, caused a strong pull to shear component out of the mode one plane, very rough fracture surfaces, and so we ended up with a fracture toughness of 140 MPa root meter for this brittle glass. Um, the question that we now have to ask, given that we obviously kind of understand why we get such large deviations, is why do we sometimes get uh, such features with very rough fracture surface and, and the unrealistically high numbers, and sometimes we get the very nice mode one uh, failure characteristic where everything seems to be okay and we get clean fracture surfaces. In order to understand this and uh, get a better idea about what's going on, we have decided to focus on the brittle glass and the semi-brittle glass, where we are closer to, we think we are closer to, we should get better results or more realistic results, and made a new comparison by just taking samples that had a clean fracture surface where these features did not influence our uh, fracture toughness results. When we make this new comparison between bending and tension now, 
uh, then we should expect under linear elastic condition to get the same uh, results. There should not be a difference between bending and tension. However, when we look at these numbers, we still get very high numbers between uh, 50 to above 60 MPa root beta for the two classes in bending, but there is still a trend to even higher numbers in tension, above 60, 75 MPa root beta. The only reason that uh, that can account for that this is occurring is that we are not really linear elastic anymore. We have something like either fully plastic or semi-plastic conditions where for single edge notch tension specimens, we do not have sufficient corrective triaxiality. The corrective stresses are not unique anymore. We cannot assume a single parameter assumptions. We can also not use linear elast elastic plastic Correction mechanics simply because an HRR field cannot build up ahead of, of the corrective and we basically reach the limits of our linear elastic correction uh, mechanics so that we end up with basically sample size and geometry dependent fracture toughness numbers. And this kind of explains to us why we get such a large deviation in our fracture toughness results and this is something we need to get under control in order to, to get this variability down. And this already brings me to the conclusion of my talk. We've seen that metallic glasses are an interesting and quite fascinating class of materials with quite decent combination of mechanical properties. Their variability currently prevents them from being used in uh, many applications, especially structural applications. Uh, processing obviously is something that plays a very important role, but also mechanical test and the effect of notch root radius and sample size tells us that we need to be very uh, careful what we report about this class and how we report it. We need to be religiously careful and always make sure that we give the testing conditions with the numbers. And our loading condition tests, as we have just seen, they tell us that we basically reach the limits or seem to reach the limits. We run out of steam with our linear elastic fraction mechanics so that we get uh, basically close to the same plastic conditions, which gives us this large variation of numbers that we need to get down uh, in order to ever be able to use these materials for any sort of structural application, especially when it comes to safety critical applications. And with that, I'm at the end, and thank you all for your attention. <laughs>